Cosmo, um, so I wanted to kick off by asking, um, I suppose I want to find a happy medium with regard to my time versus um, accountancy and sales, and where is that's where I need to, to be maximizing my time. So what records do I need to keep? Okay, well, um, I am convinced that um, records should be kept in order to help you with your business. So the first question I need to ask you is, have you decided, are you going to be VAT registered or not? I'm not sure yet. Um, can you give me some information on that and, and see where I can go? Okay, well, the long and the short about being VAT registered is you need to decide whether you're going to be business to business or business to customer. If you're business to business, then it doesn't really matter one way or the other where you're, whether you're VAT registered. If you're selling to customers, you need to be very careful because you're going to be 23% more expensive because you're having to add 23% on because you're you're in that you you will be at the at the standard rate of that, which is the highest of the rates. Um, obviously, you don't have to be registered for VAT when you start off um, because there are various different thresholds, and in your threshold, because you're providing a service, your threshold is 37 and a half thousand euros in a 12 month period. Now that's not in the tax year, it's in a 12 month period. So when you start off, you have choices to make. And the thing about the VAT is that if you are registered for VAT, your level of admin and level of bookkeeping becomes greatly increased. So what we would say always to people is that they should be thinking and they should be thinking with a calculator in their hand to work out whether it is beneficial for them to be registered for VAT or not in the first six or nine months. Um, I can't tell you the pros for your business, but I can certainly tell you the cons for everybody's business, which means that you have to do a tax return every two months, which means a higher level of admin and bookkeeping. And for me, unless there's a very, very good reason for why you have to be registered for VAT, I would be saying, don't register for VAT until you have to. Why? Because it means you can go out and get loads of sales and do loads of business rather than be, be having to concern yourself with books and so on. Um, once you are registered for VAT, you do have the benefit of being able to claim the VAT back on your purchases. But an awful lot of people who are providing service only don't actually have an awful lot of purchases and don't therefore have a whole pile of VAT to reclaim. So the whole issue of VAT for a small sole trader is work out as best you can whether you're going to be, first of all, whether you're going to hit over the threshold in your first 12 months. And not everybody does. So if you take uh, it being 37 and a half thousand is the lower threshold for those providing services, if they are going to happy enough pulling in uh, about 3,000 euros worth of sales a month, that's going to keep them under the threshold. Uh, if there's almost no costs, that's not a bad first year's trading um, to be making 36,000 euros. So I don't see the benefit for somebody who maybe just has their foot, they're working from home, they're really only claiming VAT back, the only VAT they could claim back really is their phone bill and their stationery and bits and pieces like that. It's not going to be a huge heap of money that they're going to be able to reclaim. So start off small, start off simple, and make sure that your business is your business. Don't have people telling you, yes, you must register for VAT. You don't have to. Does that sort out the VAT bit? It does really. And I suppose I, on based on that information and knowledge, I wouldn't register for VAT at the outset until I get myself onto my feet. And um, I will be sole trader anyway, starting off for a while. Um, so I think it makes more sense. I wouldn't have an awful lot of purchases. Um, I mean, I work from home. So with that in mind, um, what costs can I claim with working from home, my electricity? Or does that make sense at all? 
Well, it does and it doesn't. Um, and it is, a, it is a, a, a thing at the moment that people are talking about, but it, it, we may leave that till another day. The fact is, the only substantial bill that you will be able to claim VAT back on is actually your phone bill. And if you buy, bought a printer, you know, you say you bought a printer for 500 quid, there'd be 23% VAT on that. But it doesn't make sense um, to be going to all the trouble to save a couple of hundred euros worth of VAT in a year. Um, it doesn't make sense because you're going to be having to charge your customers 23% VAT and that may, may make you uncompetitive. One of the advantages that you would have in your profession is that you're competing with bigger people who are charging 23%. So you're able to charge the same amount of money and pocket the whole lot. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a complete and utter no-brainer that you should take it very slowly and make sure that you're going to actually benefit from being VAT registered or not. Okay, yes, I understand that. Um, so if I'm not registering for that, I won't have a cost of an accountant either? But you don't have to have an accountant ever. Um, well, you have to you have to be a very large company before you're obliged to have an accountant. Um, the revenue are very very helpful with people nowadays who are wanting to uh, look after their own taxes and things like that. But again, that's for another conversation, another day. Okay. Well, I'm um, I'm happy with that to start with anyway. I did. Your